Hello everyone, Panda here, and welcome back to Perfect Date. I keep on getting messages, Panda, when are you going to play more of that meme <coughs> fucking cat dating game? And uh, the answer is right now. We're still only on chapter one, though. I mean, I assume there is actually a lot of this game to go. So maybe we should try and uh, get a little bit stuck in here and actually try and complete something. I don't really know how I'm meant to complete this game. Oh, or have any idea of, uh, of any of that, but I think today we can do a little bit of recon to start off with. Sure, why not? We've done absolutely none of it. Right, so we completed that one, so that security guard I met when I arrived might be a good lead. Time for a bit of interrogation work. Wait, we're gonna interrogate a dude? Okay, that sounds good. Get out the nipple clamps and the car battery. I've been staring at the back of his head for a long time now. Too long. I'm starting to feel creepy, I just don't understand it. All he does is sit in that chair by the dock, eating egg sandwiches, gross, and doing crossword puzzles. How does a man like that become the security guard for a place like this? As far as I can tell, his job consists of greeting the boat to make sure nothing unauthorized gets on or off, picking up supply deliveries, and occasionally taking a long, lazy nap of the island to make sure everything's secure. I wonder what he knows about the research that goes on here. If anything, he doesn't seem to be interested, regardless. I decided it's time to get to know the, this island bouncer and go and join him at the dock. Oh, hello, sir. I sit next to Zane. Me on the sand, him in that chair. He's not wearing his big coat, and the short sleeve shirt allows me to notice for the first time how surprisingly muscular he is. I never truly thought of him as a security in the bodyguard sense, but now, squinting at him sideways, trying not to stare too obviously, I begin to see him in a new light. I pluck up the courage to talk. Hey Zane, how are you? Are you trying to start a conversation? He says this without looking up from his crossword puzzle. Oh, um, I suppose I am, yes. I don't get to chat with humans much in my job. Research assistant 125. He rolls the words out like he's reading them. Oh, yes, I guess that's me. So what does the number stand for anyhow? You don't know? He asks monotonously, eyes still glued to his crossword puzzle. No, actually, to be honest, Zane, I don't know much at all. There's a definite lack of intel sharing on this project. Which project would that be? Uh, this one? The whole research project that's going on? Is there more than one? Depends who you ask. You, I was just asking you, really. I don't understand your job. I don't need to. I don't care about things I don't need to. What do you care about? Zane looks at me for the first time. You really want to talk, don't you? Well, there's not much else to do here. Besides, I'm interested in it all, aren't you? My interests consist of what's for dinner and when my next puzzle book's coming. When's it coming? You get it delivered? Comes with the mail. He's back to not looking at me again. The mail? You mean the parcels? And the letters, yeah. The letters? Who would go to the trouble of sending mail all the way out here when we have email? I laugh, but Zane looks very serious. It's safer sending mail the old-fashioned way. With email, there's viruses, hackers, worms, cyber terrorists. I get the feeling he's not very tech-savvy. Yeah, but anyone could open and read a letter, right? Not if I'm around. And besides, who would suspect that something important would be in a fragrant pink envelope? There's an awkward silence. Of course, being my usual socially inept self, I'm desperate to fill it. Need any help with that crossword? I'm pretty good. I can even do the cryptic puzzle in the Daily Inquirer. This line usually gains me a little kudos, but Zane simply ignores me. I decide to just come out and say what's on my mind. I mean, it can't make things more awkward than they already are. Zane, have you ever noticed anything strange going on here? Cats behaving weirdly? Zane suddenly looks up, his eyes locking straight onto mine, unwavering and hard. No. Have you? Well, not exactly, but he's looking at me properly for the first time since we met. I've definitely captured his attention, but I'm too nervous to follow through. I'm just being silly. The lack of human company can really get to me. It gives me daft ideas. Such as? He's still staring at me, as though he's trying to read my mind. Sometimes when I'm out tagging, I feel like they're playing games with me. Like children, hide and seek, that kind of thing. Some of those cats may be, be cleverer than any of us. Give them credit for. Now it's my turn to be intrigued. In what way? They know when to stay out of the sun. You're going pink. The moment, if there was one, is over. I decide maybe Zane isn't the best person to talk about my concerns. Talk to about my concerns. Feeling unwanted and slightly dejected, I decide to head back to camp. I stand up and brush the sand off me. What's a five-letter word for solitude? Alone. Oh, nice, I did it. Zane silently scribbles in his book as I leave. Sweet, apparently I'm a crossword master. Right, so I don't know, what's that achieved us there? Has that achieved us some antidote? It has achieved us some antidote percentage. Uh, I believe I've got to rest. Because otherwise my health will go down to zero, and I think that'll mean that I'm dead. So let's rest. Let's 
makes music. Meow. Now, let me see. Is that everything I need? I refer to Mum's recipe. Nana's original granola. Okay. Yeah, that looks... Yeah, it looks good. That looks good. Oh, wait. Did I forget to order the coconut? I rummaged around in the supply box that arrived this morning until my hands find the bag they're searching for. Phew. Coconut shavings are a necessity. Wait. Even if I had forgotten them, I'm on an island with an abundance of fresh coconuts. Still getting used to island life. I set that up to 150. Yeah, okay, all right. Homemade granola is absolutely essential. I, I'm not a fan of granola, so I'm pretty much just ready to, to just skip this. Not interested. Not interested. Granola. Blech. Gross. Get it out of here. Get that shit out of here. Okay, so we've rested. Now we've got all of our health. All right, so I guess... Let's do a research blob and see what happens when these get to the top. Maybe. Ready to leave? No, 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 no. Okay, so that that doesn't do it. All right, we're going to have to go for more romance then. All right, Mrs. Snooty Booty? I'm coming. I'm coming for that puss. And by that I mean cat. Hey, Snoots. Fancy seeing you here. Really? But this is my spot, human. I'm often to be found here. I let it go because I'm excited about what I've brought. Pick a hand. I hold out my fist in front of Snooty Booty. Oh, a game. How merry. She stretches out her paw in the direction of my left hand. Ta-da! I open it to reveal a piece of core stone that I cut up in the lab. Oh, what a lovely rock you have there. It's core stone! I thought it could work well as a nail file. What a clever thing you are. That's not even the best bit. Look! I open the other fist to reveal my fantastic find. Oh my, what is that thing? It's nail polish! I found it in the lab! Oh my god, we're so excited. I have no idea who it could belong to, and honestly, I don't like to think too much about it, but I figured I could borrow it for one short hour without anyone missing it. And it looks like just your color. I squint at the bottom of the bottle. It's called... Desire. I raise my eyebrows at the Sphinx. Oh, nail polish, you say? Show me, human! She suddenly seems more interested. I thought I could try giving you a salon-style manicure, befitting a lady. Most sweet of you. Now, should we sort the snacks and drinks first? Oh, uh, well, I came straight from work, so I didn't really... Oh, never mind. It won't take you more than a moment to fetch a coconut, and then we shall begin. I can't believe I'm actually doing her bidding. You have to hand it to her. The air of entitlement certainly gets her what she wants. I'm back quickly and out of breath. Within minutes, we settle into our session. Tell me if this feels at all uncomfortable, Snoots. I've never done this before, so guidance would be most helpful. It's surprisingly satisfying. I can see why other cats might engage in the process of scratching at trees and rocks. I've always thought they were hunting for termites, like little scavengers. <laughs> Next foot. I've finished her hind legs and I'm on the final front paw. The stone works really well. Did I tell you how I cut it in the lab? I don't believe you did. So how does this nail polish work? Is it like paint? I ignore her rudeness. Why is that rude? Exactly. Paint it on and wait for it to dry. I never painted someone's nails before, so this will be a new experience for both of us. I open the bottle and make the first stroke. Try to keep as still as possible. I think you'll find I'm statuesque in my stillness. Your hand is less so. I know. Sorry. Your nails are just so tiny. I'm trying to color within the lines. What lines? Never mind. It's a human thing, I guess. I'm not sure I care for the smell of this nail polish. Really? I quite like it. Reminds me of pear drops. Of what? Oh, sorry. Another human thing. Wow. Look, though. Your paws look fantastic. <laughs> The long, sleek talons are glinting shiny red in the sunlight. Oh my, I am spectacular. She extends her claws momentarily and presses them into my arm. Not enough to puncture the skin, but if I tried to move, it would hurt. For the first time, I appreciate what lethal weapons they could be. I must keep that in mind. So, come on then. I take out my catalog. Come on what? Pose for the camera. Oh goodness, I hadn't realized this was going to be a photographic session also. How exciting. Yes, well, I'm going to have to remove that varnish before I go, so I thought it'd be nice to let you have a photo. Remove it? The Sphinx hat looks appalled. Whatever for? Oh, Snoots, I'm sorry, didn't I say? I can't leave it on you permanently. It would impede the natural retraction of your claws. That's interesting. Then I shall leave them extended. You can't do that. Her expression darkens. I beg your pardon, for I thought for a moment I heard you tell me what I can't do. Surely I was mistaken. Um, we're going to do what the cat says. You know what? If Snooty Booty wants to wear the freaking nail varnish and fuck up her claws, that's your choice, cat. That's your choice. No, Snoots. You heard me perfectly well. I must... Oh, no, I didn't... 
shit, insist? Her forehead wrinkles with her raised eyebrow. I need to tread carefully here. Ask your permission. Please may I remove the varnish now? But it simply does not make sense. Why do it in the first place? I know how much we enjoy things like this pampering. I thought it would be a fun thing for us to share. You had fun, didn't you? Well, yes, but I certainly wouldn't have had I known you were simply doing it to taunt me. I wasn't doing it to taunt you, Boots. She seems genuinely upset. I'm sorry. There is an awkward little standoff. Her eyeing the rubbing alcohol, me eyeing her claws. I rack my brains to think of a way to compromise with her. Perhaps if I tried appealing to her sense of style. I wonder if you'd like to try something. I don't know why I didn't do it in the first place, actually. I'm so forgetful sometimes. You're wittering. Well, just before I came to the island, there was a craze sweeping the fashion world. I can tell I've caught her attention. I read all about it in Bon Vivant magazine. Go on. It's a French thing, apparently. Snooty Booty cocks her head to the side. It's called, uh, the Pinky Flick. Flesh Rose? She's going for it. I feel encouraged. I'm thinking on my feet. All the celebrities are doing it. Doing what? Having their pinky nail pin painted while their other nails are left natural. Just one nail? She looks intrigued. Yes, it really does look so striking and a la mode. Show me! Bullseye. I go to take Snooty's paw in mine, but she snatches it away. No. Show me! I pause, uncertain of what she means. Then the penny drops. She wants me to paint my own nails, my own pinky nail with desire. Oh, uh, gladly. I suppose I should have expected Snooty Booty to attempt to groom me at some point. Here goes. I swipe some of the bright red pol polish on my left pinky. What do you think? Looks a la mode, right? I hold my pinky finger to the corner of my mouth coyly. Well, I suppose it does look rather fetching. I'll make a deal with you, human. I will wear my nails a la mode if you promise to keep yours painted for the rest of your stay here. It's a deal. I doubt that such a tiny amount of varnish will cause her too much harm. It will come off naturally quite soon anyway. Mine, on the other hand, is going to be more permanent. I can't wait to explain this to Professor Pauper. Right, so we've romanced Snooty Booty a bit, I guess. And I do wonder if I... Right, if I click this research... Once you complete your research, your time on Cat Island will come to an end. Have you seen everything you wanted to see? No! So I don't quite understand... I'm gonna have to do romance again. Right, Snooty Booty, prepare that booty, because I'm about to get... Snooty. I'm back, cat friend. Be a dear, would you? Snooty Booty's in the habit now of holding out a limp, manicured paw for me to massage. I resignedly oblige. Oh, do you know? That reminds me, I have something for you. Something for me? Oh, look at you with your mouth agape. Do close it, you'll embarrass us both. I'm sorry, I just didn't expect you'd ever think of me when I'm not with you. Ha, you do make me laugh, human. Oh my, are you serious? Well, I'll have you know, I think of you a great deal. Oh, you're my most faithful subject, don't you know? Now, if you want your gift, carry me further down the beach, and I'll show you where I hid it. Cradling the hairless cat like a baby, I stroll barefoot along the beach. Snooty Booty directs me with a wave of her paw every now and then. After a while, she loudly comments, commands that I stop and put her down. Here. Snooty stay says with her regular level of enthusiasm, pointing a perfectly filed claw at a mound of sand. I buried it. I suppose you want me to dig it up then, eh, Boots? Ha! You always know what to say to make me laugh, human. It's quite a talent, I tell you. With a sigh, I start digging. Thankfully, she didn't bury it very deep, and after a few seconds, I find a small object wrapped in a silk scarf. We wouldn't want sand getting on it, would we, dear? Snooty Booty says with a small smile. I carefully open up the flimsy sink bundle, silk bundle and turn the contents over in my hands. It's a little black tub with a plain label stuck in it, which reads, Skin Cream P103. Do you love it? Um, what is it? Oh dear, can you not read? Yes, it says skin cream, but I don't exactly know what that entails. Oh, you see, one massages skin cream into one's skin. Yes, I understand that, Boots, but whose is this? Where did you find it? Well, it's yours now, human. I roll my eyes and further inspect the tub. It's very small and plain, with no cosmetic logo or name to be found. I pop open the plastic lid, and sure enough, it's full to the brim with goop. I scoop some out with my index finger and smell it. It smells disgusting. Like bin juice or something. Oh, <laughs> it's disgusting. Boots! I can't put this on my skin. I'll attract all sorts of bugs and wildlife. Oh, come now, we must suffer for our beauty, mustn't we? What's in this stuff, Booty? Where did you get it from? All I ask that is you try some on your skin and tell me you don't see instant results. Oh, Snooty, have you been using this stuff? Of course. Without knowing where it's come from? But I know exactly where it's come from. Well, then, would you please let me in on the secret? Oh, calm down, human. 
you'll give yourself more wrinkles. Let's take a moment to ponder how my generosity in giving you a thoughtful gift has developed into you interrogating me in such a brutish nate manner. I take a deep breath. Snooty booty, I do apologize, and thank you sincerely. Of course I'm touched by your generosity and consideration. However, I'm also quite concerned for your welfare. Did you take this thing from the lab? Oh no, not at all. Thank goodness. I took it from the stockpile behind the lab, where the fire pits are. Oh shit. You mean the incinerators? Snooty, do you take this from the toxic waste bins? I have no idea what they're called, but they routinely give the fo but they routinely give forth the most incredible produce. Waste is indeed a fitting word. I think you'll find toxic is the objective word in that title, Snoots. The contents of those bins are meant to be burned. But why are they burning skin cream? I further scrutinize the tub and conclude that it really is some kind of beauty product. This makes no sense. Actually, Princess, this is a fantastic present. I'm going to take it right now for further examination. Thank you so much for this. Well, finally, a little gratitude. I'm very grateful. Well, you can report back to me with how splendid you look after a few applications. Oh, I will. One thing, though, Snooty. Just to be clear, have you been using this? But of course. I wouldn't recommend something without trying it myself first. And no problems? As you can see, human, my skin is as smooth and clear as porcelain. Yes, so why incinerate it? Speak up, human, you're mumbling. Nothing, Snooty. I just need your word that you will not use any more products that you find near the lab again, okay? Oh, I see your game, human. You want to be the fairest of them all, eh? No, that's not it. Very well, human, I shall go au natural for a while, and you'll see how, without even a touch of skin cream, I am still as radiant as a star. Oh, okay, Snooty. Uh, challenge accepted? Indeed. Right. So, I mean, honestly, at this point, do we really know what the fuck they're actually doing on this island? Not at all. Yay! Yes! New unlocks! Recon 16. Roger that. Right, so what next? What is next on my agenda? So if I do this... It didn't end the game. We're going, we're going in for the fifth thing here. Is this the sex? Is this the cat sex? Is this what we've been waiting for? I don't know. Ah, the delicacy of a moment is sometimes only matched by the beauty of the moonlight's reflection on the sea. Snooty Booty turns her big, shining eyes, shining silver eyes up to meet mine. Human, I've lived a long life, and only the first of nine, don't you know? It has been much the same, for as far back as my fragile memory reaches, seeing the moon reflect on the sea would, would once mean only that I had stayed awake too long, and that I shall see that same shade of grey reflected in the circles under my eyes the next day. However, seeing how you conduct yourself human, with the grace of a drunken fruit fly, and yet the confidence of a red-bottomed mandrill has left me quite inspired. You do not care one bit about how you look. I subtly try and comb my hair with my fingers as Snooty Booty turns her attention back to the moon. I have found since meeting you that when one cares less about one's appearance, one finds the capacity to care about other things. Is that so, Boots? Quite so human indeed. I have found it rather freeing to bathe in salt water, something which not long ago would have caused me to turn grey with anxiety. In the same vein, I feel I'm owed some thanks for teaching you a thing or two about proper skincare. Snooty, you demand that I use a night cream cause me to break out in hives. Wait, your demand that I use the night cream caused me to break out in hives? Did it? But once they subsided, you were left with a very healthy glow. I sigh. Panda? Yes, Snooty Booty? There's a poem I half remember. The words have become irrelevant, but the sentiment is so enduring that it is almost enough to cause me to weep at the thought of it. Music is also like that, don't you find? And smell, all of the senses in fact, are the palette that colours the experiences and leaves an incredible mark on the soul. That, that's beautiful. Human, I believe you and I are both aesthetes. I don't actually know what that means. We're what? We share an artiste appreciation of the something. And again, what, really? Do try and keep up. I can tell I'm somewhat spoiling a mood here, so I keep my mouth shut and try to look engaged. I've always suffered on this God's forsaken island from the lack of many things, but nothing has quite matched the pain of feeling alone, not having a companion to share the most delicate sensibilities that life has to offer. Like orgasms, maybe. An alluring scent, a vibrant hue, an epicurean delight, all the subtle joys that are wasted on our more uncivilized cohabitants. It's been like air to my suffocation, sharing time with you, human. Why, Snoots, thank you. I enjoy our time together, too. And so... She plows on as though I'm an interruption. I feel that together you and I might create something rather wonderful. Oh? A masterpiece! Oh right, a masterpiece. Out of what? Out of us, human. A union. A joining together of souls. 
I don't know, a marriage of hearts and minds. Are you saying what I think you're saying, Snooty? I am saying that I'm fond of you, enough to give me cause to believe that we may be able to commit to each other in the time-honored tradition of love, human. Oh, wow. I love you too. I love you too. I, well, I'm amazed. What you're saying is, is more than I could ever have hoped for. So it's agreed, human. You shall dote on me as my equal from now on? Absolutely. I'm 100% about the doting. Snooty will certainly keep that part of this agreement. I'm a little more suspicious about the equal part somehow, but as we sit together, admiring the huge orange moon, I feel quietly confident that she will learn with time and a patient teacher. I got an achievement, relationship goals, Snooty booty. So... What? What now? Do we rest? What if I click this? I can't click this. Shit, uh, let's rest. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's rest, I guess. See what happens overnight. I sit in the position Professor Pauper taught me. Legs crossed, back straight, wrist resting lightly on my knees, and fingers formed into loose circles with forefinger and thumb touching gently. I close my eyes and hear a rhythmic purring. Slow and steady. Mm. And I was aroused. My fur prickles at the sea breeze, and my ears twist at the distant sounds of my feet on wood, and seagulls crying in another, faraway place. The smell of the sea fills my nostrils. The taste of salt fills my mouth. <laughs> okay, continue. I begin to focus on my breathing and the rhythm of my heartbeat, allowing my mind to drift. As I take a deep breath in, the tide comes creeping towards me, as though I'm pulling it. When it's just centimeters away from my bare toes, I slowly release my outward breath to a count of five beats. One, two, three, four, five. With each beat, I push the tide back into the horizon till it's almost touching the rising sun. This actually sounds very relaxing. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, five. Drifting now, without attachment to thought, my mind free from worry and care. Is that it? Oh, okay, that was a quick night. So we're at 13% on the antidote. I can't do romance. I have to do one of these. I'm actually, I'm very confused. I'm very, very confused. Well, I guess, what if I rest again? Can't rest again. All right, we're gonna have to do something and it's gonna try and take me off the island. Research, I guess. I don't really wanna leave, but yeah, okay, I'm ready. It's a bit unfortunate. So we can do this. Today I'm off for a field trip of sorts with the professor. I can't wait to see what he's planning to show me. Right, so off we head. So I guess maybe every time you play this through, you can romance one cat and then it'll unlock more cats in future. And you've got to play through and unlock all the different cats and romance them all. Perhaps, I don't know. Anyway, Professor Porple told me I'm ready to be ready early and dressed for hiking as we're doing field work this morning. I'm not sure that I have anything that would pass for hiking gear, to be honest. Some sturdy shoes would be good. Oh well, lab coat and trainers it is then as usual. A message from the professor lights up my catalogue. <laughs> professor Pauper, set to go, I'm waiting outside my tent. Ah, Panda, are you ready for field work today? Yes, of course, Professor. May I ask where we're going? Somewhere I think you'll find very interesting. The professor hands me a backpack. Here, take this bag. It's very full, but surprisingly light. Pauper set off at a brisk pace, calling back to me over his shoulder. This way! I run to catch him up. After some serious walking, with me struggling to keep up, the professor stops abruptly and listens. Do you hear that? There is a distant sound of bubbling water. We're almost there. Secretly, I'm relieved, as I don't think I could go much further. Just a little climbing. Climbing. I hide my dismay. Where does he get his energy from? It's just at the top there. It's not as difficult a climb as it looks. We are in front of an almost vertical rock face. Just copy me. He clambers up expertly. I manage to find a spot that will support my foot and start the climb. I make little progress before slipping and falling flat on my bum. I try again. This time I take it slow. Again I fall. What happened to the benefits of catification that others keep going on about? The professor notices I'm having trouble and holds a hand out for me. I manage to climb up just enough to take hold of him and he lifts me the rest of the way. His strength is impressive. Curious even. Not a fan of climbing, eh? Can't say I've done much of it, Professor. Come along then, I can get you there. He pretty much pulls me up all the way to the top and then leads me to the entrance of a small cave. The sound of running water is very loud now. 
I instantly see why. A natural spring has cut its way through the rock and created a beautiful cascade of sparkling, clear water. It looks delicious. I kneel down without thinking and begin to drink. It tastes amazing. As I come up for breath, I see the professor looking at me with suspicion. You should know better. It is never wise under any circumstances to ingest something that is unproven, but here on this island, it would be prudent to exercise more caution than normal. I feel embarrassed at my lack of consideration. Yes, of course, sir. I wasn't thinking. I felt so thirsty and it looked so good. I do understand. Many have made the same error. Fortunately for you, this is tried and tested for safe consumption. It's good, don't you think? My body feels suddenly re-energized. I feel like I could climb any wall. It's incredible. I feel fantastic. What's in it? We don't know. That's why we're here. We need more samples. We've been studying this water for months now, and we still know very little about it. Check your bag. I open my bag. It's full to the brim with empty plastic bottles. We'll need to fill all of these with water. We're going to need as much as we can carry. I do as he says, but by the time all the bottles are full and back in my bag, it weighs a ton. But I can't feel like I can lift anything. The effect of the water is powerful. The professor has also packed his own rucksack with bottles. That should do us for now. Let's get these back. As we make our way down the rock face and back to camp, I have no problem keeping up with the professor. I feel like I could run all the way. However, as we get closer to home, I start to feel the effects wear off. My bag becomes unbearably heavy. The final limp into camp is torture. I need to rest. So is that the day complete? We've actually... That should have used a bunch of rest, right? Oh! I've come to the forest to gather my thoughts. This morning I noticed another change in my appearance. Up until now it's been easy to cover up my transition. I just had to keep on top of removing the excess body hair. Even the stub of a tail that appeared a few days ago hasn't been a problem. We've heard nothing about this. What does the stats thing say? Alright, just says that. Who'd see it? But this new development is definitely a turning point. How am I going to explain the fact that my pupils have turned into vertical slits? Oh god. I can't risk anyone seeing me like this. So I'm going to hide out for a while and see what happens. Snooty booty, here! Spread it here. The shade is perfect. She's indicating a small spot on the sand beneath a large palm tree for our midday nap. I begin to spread the old blanket I've been dragging behind me. It's the one I used to have on my bunk when I lived in a tent. That memory is beginning to fade a little around the edges. I still recall how conflicted I felt. Though, I knew I wanted to be with Snooty, but I had a strong urge to keep working on the antidote. Eventually, the decision was made for me. I found it too difficult to remember things in the lab. I kept making mistakes. Then I just sort of allowed myself to sink into my transition. It was quite gentle, and the reward was worth any problems. Hey, look at me! What the fuck is going on? Yes, this bit of shade is perfect, just like you. But really, Snoots, I don't know why you need this old thing. The sand is so soft and warm. Also, it creeps me out of it. It reminds me... For goodness sake, Panda, you've been a cat for five minutes, and already you know what's best for me, for us. May I remind you that you have fur to protect your skin, but mine is exposed and far more delicate. I suppress a giggle. Yes, of course, my love. You have skin like the wings of a butterfly. Yes, and I have no idea why that amuses you so. I'm just happy. You make me happy. Well, you could make me very happy right now. Name it, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. You really ought to be more mindful of those rash declarations. I mean it, just name it, anything. Well, fortunately, I have a very kind and humble nature, so I shan't take advantage of your simplicity. All I want is that you fan me with a palm leaf. I look around until I find one. I can comfortably curl my tail around. This isn't nearly as easy as it used to be. But practice makes perfect, my dear. We settle down in the peace and quiet of the afternoon, me gently wafting the palm leaf over a snoozing snoots. How much more blissful could life be? I'm half tempted to warm, to warn the new research assistant to just throw in the towel from the start and join us. But I suppose they have their own journey's end, so I'm afraid, so I'm glad I found mine. So I've turned into a fucking cat. We've done it. We started off as a human, and now we're a cat. And... Chapter 1, complete. Relationship status in a relationship with Snooty Booty. Ending achieved, Frisian. Dates completed, 5. Recon completed, 2. Research, 3. Current playthrough, 3 research. 9% of the total game seen. 1 ending found, 0 secrets. So what does continue do? Does that take me back into a new... Oh, God, it makes me start a new goddamn thing. Well, that is the end of my perfect date adventure as Panda, I guess. Shit. Oh, we actually completed this character too. Interesting. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, guys. If you if you really want me to do more perfect date, I will do it. I'll do one of these characters. Let me know which character you want me to do, and we can, we can chase that down. 
Um, if you've enjoyed, leave a like, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed me just sitting here reading stuff. It's pretty chill, right? It's pretty chill. Anyway, have a fantastic day. I will see you soon. Panda the cat out? Meow? Meow. Meow.